and welcome to the Von You podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your English robot friend host Brian filling in for Rayo 2 today. In this episode, I will be reading a collection of articles on Wally Minto and some of his alternative energy discoveries in the 1970s. The first will be an excerpt from Vonulife No. 2, July 1971, which set off this exploratory journey. The second, a New York Times article from 1970, and finally, a short piece from RexResearch.com. If you'd like to discuss this or more breakthrough energy solutions further, please find us in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence on Telegram, Simplex, Email, Coordinator at Pasnia.com or however else you'd like to chime in. Please enjoy. Datsun to produce external combustion automobile IN 1978. Minto's car is so pollution-free that it is 200 times closer than the standards the government hopes to be able to require by 1980. It's powered by the steam of the common refrigerant, Freon and a clean external combustion, to heat the Freon, replaces the traditional internal combustion engine, which inherently, by the very nature of its actions, must produce pollutants. This is no dream car, too impractical for man production. On the contrary, one of the world's largest auto manufacturers, Nissan Motor Corporation of Tokyo, has signed a contract with the inventor and plans to have Minto engine equipped, Datsun's rolling off the production line in 1972. One day this spring, perhaps before these words reach print, Minto's model or prototype car, built into the body of a Datsun station wagon, will be given a public demonstration run in Sarasota and Haps in Washington. And then it will be shipped off to the Japanese manufacturers. In Minto's own words, the secret of a pollution-free engine is no secret at all. Sitting back at his desk at Kinetics Corporation, tall, moustached, and down-to-earth, he explains briefly the physics and chemistry of combustion. When burning takes place at normal atmospheric pressure, with proper engineering and plentiful oxygen, ideally everything burns up, and the only products of the chemical action are two normal components of the atmosphere, carbon dioxide and water. That's external combustion, which is used in the Minto engine. Internal combustion, on the other hand, involves explosions within the engine cylinder. It's combustion under pressure and without enough air, and it is process dictates unconsumed substances which are emitted as air pollution. It's a built-in phenomenon, Minto says. You can't clean it up, the trick is designing the car, then, was not any new discovery about how to burn cleanly. Rather, It was the inventor's choice of a highly suitable vaporizing substance, freon or fluorocarbon, to provide the steam and good engineering in the development of construction and parts fashioned to make the most efficient use of freon power. The system is a closed circuit. Liquid freon is vaporized in a boiler, which is heated by kerosene, or any other fuel. The expanding vapor turns the motors, then goes to the condenser, a bank of finned tubes placed on the roof of the prototype car but to be installed under the hood of later models. Here it turned back to liquid again and is returned to the boiler for reuse. The old Stanley steamer worked on a similar principle, though it differed substantially in the particulars of design. But the early steamers and water, of course, to produce their expanding vapor. And water had too many built-in problems to make the steam engine practical in competition with the internal combustion engine. Water froze in the winter. It had to be heated to a temperature that could cause fatal scalding in a car accident. It was required in large volume and hence demanded oversized, unwieldy boilers and pipes. Freon, however, poses none of these problems, and it has a number of additional assets as well. It doesn't freeze. Its boiling point is only 117 degrees Fahrenheit, much cooler than the 140 degrees at which your hot water runs at home. And it is a highly dense substance, requiring much less volume than water and permitting light, compact pipes and boiler. The refrigerant is also non-flammable, in fact, 
it is used as a fire extinguisher. And it's a nice, dry gas, to quote Minto, so that the equipment it travels through should last indefinitely, because no car, however pollution-free, will appeal to the American public unless it has other selling qualities as well. We ought to examine some of the additional advantages Minto claims for his vehicle. These indicated that it is not only possible to eliminate pollution from auto exhausts, Detroit to the contrary notwithstanding, but to make such a car with considerable sales appeal. Performance and durability Minto's engine system can apply full torque to the wheels from the moment the engine starts to turn over. Its torque output, or twisting force at the wheels, is high and relatively constant from 0 to 70 miles per hour, so no complex automatic or manual shift transmission is required. The engine is direct coupled to the drive wheels, with important savings in friction issues. Powerful reverse torque is available at all times for non-fade high-speed braking. The entire system has less than one one-hundredth the number of moving parts found in the conventional engine system. Accordingly, there are fewer parts to wear out or break down. The moving engine parts never come in contact with flame or the corrosive products of combustion. Neither does the lubricating oil of the engine system. Oil never has to be changed. The car is cheaper to build and maintain and has comparable fuel economy to the internal combustion engine. Since the fuel is burned non-explosively, the car needs no muffler and the engine is virtually noiseless. When the vehicle is stopped in traffic, the engine is motionless and no fuel is burned to keep it idling. This cuts down on city thermal pollution, as does the car's quietness cut down on city noise pollution. This article is excerpted, with type size reduction, from the magazine, Prevention. In the magazine, the writer tells how the kinetics company and Wallace Minto are going on to prove that electric power can also be economically generated by the use of freon gas from sources of heat which have been until now been wasted, and that these methods are also free of pollution. Interested readers would do well to subscribe to Prevention magazine which deals in general with all areas of health, and good foods and the prevention of disease by more natural methods. Reply the Minto and other external combustion engines interest me, not so much for pollution reduction, we pollute little because we drive little, and we spend little time where other people are polluting, but for ending van people's dependence on imported petroleum. The fuel burned can be replaced with one burning wood or charcoal or, in stationary applications, with solar, geothermal, or nuclear heat sources. Even external combustion of wood forms pollutants but humans have had a million years evolutionary experience with them, thanks to Johnny Reb for clipping. Rayo? Japanese to get non-polluting car. This is a digitized version of an article from the Times's print archive, before the start of online publication in 1996. To preserve these articles as they originally appeared, the Times does not alter, edit or update them. Sarasota, Florida, August 17. Wallace L. Minto, an engineer and scientist who invented a non-polluting, freon-powered, engine, announced today that he had signed a multi-million dollar contract for its mass production and use in Datsun automobiles manufactured in Japan. The contract calls for delivery by Mr. Minto of a demonstrator model of the engine within six months and delivery of a production prototype within 18 months. Mr. Minto said he expected at least 100, possibly more Datsuns to be made in 1972 with his engine, and predicted that, production would step up considerably after that. Mr. Minto and K. Kawamata, president of the Nissan Motor Company, signed the agreement earlier this month in Tokyo. Nissan, which is Japan's second-largest auto manufacturer, behind Toyota, produced 1.48 million vehicles last year and expects to make more than 2 million this year. Contract rights. Mr. Minto said Nissan had paid several million dollars for exclusive rights to manufacture the engine in Asia. In addition, the company will pay a royalty on each car produced under the agreement to Mr. Minto's Kinetics Corporation here, where the revolutionary engine was designed. 
The contract with Nissan does not prevent Mr. Minto from negotiating similar agreements with American or European companies. He said he was negotiating with the Yanmar Company of Osaka, Japan, to use a larger model than that designed for Datsun in Yanmar's tractors, auxiliary power plants, earth-moving machinery and boats. The engine sold to Nissan is similar to a conventional steam engine except that it gets its power from high-pressure gas that results from heating fluorocarbon. This liquid chemical is better known by its trade names, Freon, made by DuPont, and Unco, made by Union Carbide. The chemical is widely used as a cooling agent in refrigerators and air conditioners and as a pressure unit in vaporizers. It has an extremely low boiling point. The liquid Freon becomes gas after heating in a small boiler and dries the engine's six cylinders. The gas then goes through a condensing unit built into the roof of the car and returns to liquid form to be used again. Mr. Minto said tests have shown that the engine has an almost pollution-free exhaust. It emits less than one part per million of carbon monoxide, no unburned hydrocarbons and less than one ten thousandth part per million of nitrogen oxides. The name of this game is clean up the air and find an engineer whose exhaust does not pollute, Mr. Minto said. Air pollution has become as critical a problem in Japanese cities as it is in those in this country. Popular Science, March 1976, Tilda. Wally Minto's Wonder Wheel by E. F. Lindsley. Wally Minto's eyes twinkled. Now that you've got your pictures of the serious stuff, I want to show you our latest engine. It's at least 85% efficient, never wears out, requires no fuel or maintenance, costs very little, and should have been invented 100 years ago. I just finished shooting pictures of Minto's solar-powered, Freon engine slash generator set, PS, February 1976, and I wasn't quite sure if he was kidding about this newest engine. Four used propane bottles were hose clamped to the ends of two pieces of aluminium angle, each about four feet long. The angles crossed at 90 degrees at the center and were mounted on a central hub like a skinny four-blade windmill with bottles to swing in the breeze. Each bottle was connected to its mate on the opposite, end of the angle with steel brake line tubing. Under the rig's support was a tank of the type used to locate leaks in an inner tube. While I gazed in disbelief, Wally explained how his incredible power wheel works, see diagram below. A few weeks later I again visited the kinetics lab. By then the propane bottles had evolved into 12 containers of steel pipe welded into a polygon. The principle remained the same. I watched as Wally opened the valve to let in a trickle of water from solar panels on the roof of his parking shed. The water temperature was 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Almost imperceptibly, the wheel started to turn. The speed picked up a bit and I timed a revolution, about 1 rpm. Minto noted my misgivings. Try holding onto the shaft, he said. I grabbed the shaft firmly, it was if I'd tried to stop some eerie, irresistible force, no sound, no evidence of power, just pure twist. Picture one 200 feet in diameter, he said. This time my mind boggled. Such a rig might hoist the pyramids. Wally doesn't expect industrialized nations to scramble for his wheel, and he isn't selling anything. He's donating it as a gift to the world and expects it will be used in underdeveloped, energy short areas. For example, a practical 33 feet diameter wheel running on a temperature difference of as little as 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit and producing several horsepower could pump irrigation water, grind grain, or saw wood. The materials could be scrap pipe, and no machining or skills are needed to build it. Several low-boiling materials might be used, but propane or R12 may be best. Minto estimates a slightly larger, 40 feet, wheel with 14 pairs of 1 foot by 4.5 feet containers would provide 10,240 feet per pound of work per container as each 269 pounds of liquid responds to gravity through a 20 feet level arm. At only 1 rpm this is 8.69 horsepower, not spectacular but low cost and capable of running steadily for generations. 
The slow rotational speed can be stepped up to whatever is needed, just as with the old-time water wheels. No fuel would be needed in many cases. The temperature difference required between the liquid on the bottom and the top occurs naturally in many situations, water and air, light and shade, etc. Minto has outlined construction details in a two-sheet paper entitled The Minto Wheel. There are no restrictions on building or experimenting with the wheel. Low-boiling liquid, such as Freon or propane, fills one bottle of each pair. The opposite bottle is empty and void of air. The liquid collects in the lower bottle, which is immersed in warm, solar-heated, water. Heat from the water, or a solar reflector, or any other source slightly warmer than the surrounding air, vaporizes the liquid and forces part of it up through the connecting tube, and into the empty bottle on top. Gravity does the rest. The heavy bottle starts down, the lighter bottle floats up. As each pair shuttles its liquid mass back and forth, the whole thing turns and repeats the process endlessly. That concludes this brief overview of Wally Minto and his breakthrough, independent energy research, including an excerpt from Volume Life 2, July 1971, a 1970 New York Times archived article, and one other piece found on rexresearch.com. Thanks for your time today, and cheers from the Free Republic of Pasnia. Vanu means relative physical invulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, indirectly you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative invulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you'll add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu life. How to live and let live. Out of sight and minds of those unwilling to let live. By people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.